Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special country version of Hive Talking, the official pregame show of your Buffalo Bees. Hive Talking is brought to you by BG's Engine Products because your car should be dancing. Yeah. I'm Ronnie Robinson along with my broadcast partner, Kip Scary, coming to you from Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee. Kip, are you excited to be in Nashville? Uh, you bet I am, Ronnie. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, I have an audition at one of those famous country music recording studios. Kip, what makes you think you have what it takes to make a mark in country music? You just listen, Ronnie. I have this all queued up and ready to go, and this will be the best hive talking segment ever. I mean, who needs to interview when you have me? Hit it. I got friends in low places where the whiskey drowns and bitty beer chases my blues away. And I'll be okay. Yeah, I'm not big on social graces. Think I'll slip on down to the oasis cause I got friends. In low places. Hey, what do you think about that, Ronnie? Uh, well, Kip, I'm uh, completely underwhelmed. Although I would agree that you do have some friends in low places, present company excluded, of course. Uh, just you wait, Ronnie. I'm going to show them a wow I'm at the audition. Well, Kip, let's hope the bees wow a little more than you wowed me. Well, Nashville manager Clyde Wagner and Buffalo manager Danny Lee are at home play exchanging the lineup cards with the umpires and going over the ground rules here at Rubicon Wireless Park, which plays normal to both left-handers and right-handers. And speaking of the umpires, let's look at the umpires for tonight's game. Behind the plate will be Bart Sacco. At first base is Kevin Sloat Jr. Manning second base is Dell Sprinkle. And at third base is the crew chief, Gary Wistrom. And the umpires are sponsored by Elmwood Village Optical of Buffalo. Visit Elmwood for all your vision needs. If you go anywhere else, you'll only be making a spectacle of yourself. And Kip, I will give you the honors of going over the starting lineups for both teams. Oh, well, thanks, Ronnie. Appreciate it. Uh, starting pitchers for today's game, for the Nashville High Notes, it will be a right-hander dual player, Jose Davalos. And for your Bs, it'll be Trini Pimentel, battle of two right-handers. Now let's look at the starting lineup. First for the visiting Buffalo Bs. Leading off and playing second base will be Dylan Hutto. Batting second and playing at shortstop is going to be Dacio Orta. Hitting third and playing center fielder is Joe Barkdahl. Batting cleanup. At first base is Todd Sargent. Hitting fifth and doing the catching is Dallas Autry. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, J.R. Keel. Batting seventh at third base, Miguel Ruelas. Hitting eighth and playing right field is Lamont Clark. And batting ninth and doing the left field duties is Greg Dollywall. Those are your Buffalo Bees. For the Nashville High Notes, Leading things off at third base will be Pat Mattis. Batting second and playing in center field is Jason Maraska. Batting third, doing the duties in left field is Justin Norris. And batting cleanup and pitching will be Jose Davalos. So no designated hitter for the Nashville High Notes as Davalos will be taking that spot as the pitcher. Hitting fifth, playing first base is Mark Abeda. Batting sixth, playing as the catcher, is going to be Corey Shorter. Batting seventh at shortstop, Polly Potus. In eighth is John Pender. He's going to patrol right field. And batting ninth, and doing the duties at second base, Amato Palacios. Those are your Nashville high note lineup for tonight's game. Uh, thank you there, Kip. Appreciate that. Well, folks, welcome to Rubicon Wireless Park for this first of a three-game set with the Nashville High Notes. On the season, Buffalo is 15-7, and seven, Nashville is 8-13. and 13. 
Nashville will be neutral by default, as all new team's opponents are neutral. Unfortunately for Buffalo, they are going to be semi-dissonant in this game, and Rocky Oberbeck is unhappy until further notice. Uh, Oberbeck not in the lineup tonight, but when he is in there, he will be uh, unhappy until further notice until something else comes along. And I believe we're just about ready to get this thing going. Here from Rubicon Wireless Park. And finishing up. Actually, we need to talk about the hot and cold players. We forgot to do that when we are doing our lineups. Kip, you kind of skipped over that one. Fella, I think you were too concerned about your, your singing career. Uh, don't quit your night job, as they say. For the... Nashville high notes, of course, being the first game that they're going to play. The number two hitter, Maraska, is going to be hot by default. The number eight hitter, Pender, is going to be cold by default. For the Bees, Dylan Hutto is your hot batter, and J.R. Keel is the cold batter, just based on previous game's performances. All right, and as a reminder, the hot batter of the game for each team is sponsored by the Paper Moon Gentlemen's Club for the best in adult entertainment that is sure to provide a hot time, shoot for the moon. The Cold Players are sponsored by the Deli Llama for the best in gourmet cheeses and cold cuts. Stop by the Deli Llama. Let's take a station break and we'll be right back on the Buffalo Bees Radio Network. Cuts all the oxen on News Radio 1140. WPLA Buffalo. Welcome back to Rubicon Wireless Stadium. Jose Davalos has finished up his warm up tosses, and now I'll toss it to the voice of the bees, Ronnie Robinson. Thank you, Kip. Appreciate that. Welcome, everybody, to this Friday edition of Buffalo Bees Baseball. Davalos, those warm up tosses, and leading things off will be the Second baseman, Dylan Hutto, he is a utility player, also a catcher, but since he's a utility player, he can pretty much play wherever he wants, so tonight he's at second base. Dylan Hutto. Davalos, a semi-star with double flash and semi-control, could be a tough one. As a hitter, he's also a semi-slugger and a semi-home run king, which is why he is a dual player. Right now, he is on the mound. Here is the pitch to Dylan Hutto, righty against righty. That is a 2-2-3. Two, 2-2-3. Two, three. Two, two, three. He's going to ask, is the pitcher wild? No, he's not. He's got semi-control. Is a batter slugger or utility? He is utility, which means he's going to line out to short unless he's a whiffer. He happens to be a whiffer. So Dylan Hutto will take the whiff, and that is out number one. It's going to bring up Ignacio Orta, the shortstop. One two two, is the pitcher a workman? No, he's not a workman. Is better a champion or a whiffer? He is neither one, so he's going to line out to third for out number two. So he hit it hard, but right to Mattis, and there's two quick outs here in the top of the first. That'll bring up Joe Barkdahl. Three five five. Is he a struggler or gilded? No, he's not. Is Barkdahl a champion? Yes, he is. He's a semi-champion. The doc gives it to him. So he's going to double to left field. So how about that? A two-out double for Joe Barkdahl as he tries to get something going for the Bees here in the top of the first. So Joe Barkdahl will plant himself at second base with two down. And that'll bring up Todd Sargent, first baseman. 2-4-4. Two four four. Is the pitcher an ace? No, he's not. Is the batter a champion? He is not a champion, so he will ground to short unless it's a whiffer. He is not, so it's going to be a ground ball to short, and that's going to end the inning. Nothing doing for the bees here in the top of the first. They strand barked all at second. At the end of a half an inning, it is Buffalo. Nothing. Nashville coming to bat. And it's a warm night here in Nashville, so we're going to need to uh, pump up the air a little bit, I do believe. Uh, Kip, I don't want Kip fainting over there. Uh, yeah, Ronnie, I'm kind of fading a little bit. I might need a bitty beer to cool me off. Well, 
Kip, we'll go for we'll go with uh, some central air here and see if that helps here in the press box. All right, top or sorry, bottom of the first. Pat Mattis will lead off against Trini Pimentel. Star Flash with control. Four four six. Four four six. Is he a star? Yes, he is. It's going to be a ground out to second. Hutto is there. One away. And Mattis is retired pretty easily. One down, and that'll bring up Jason Maraska, center fielder. 266. He's not the leadoff batter, so he will fly to right field. And that's out number two. Two up, two down. That brings up Justin Norse, left fielder. 356. It's a left right split. He's a switch hitter, so he will get the hit. That left right split comes up, and just when you least expect it, it pops up in favor of the batter. So Justin Norris gets a two-out single, just like Barkdahl got the two-out double. Pimentel has to pitch around that. Here's Mark Abeda. 2-3-6, double control. He does not have it. He's not eager, so it will be a walk. So not only a single, but now a walk to Abeda. And now the trouble is brewing for Pimentel. He's got two on with two outs. Actually, that should have been Davalos. My bad. Davalos is the number four hitter, not a beta. So let's see. He's actually eager, so he will strike out. So that will end the inning. So my bad. That 2 3 6 roll, my internal rule is if you're eager, you don't walk. So he is going to be out of there. And that's going to end the inning. I knew that might be a problem with the pitcher also being the hitter or in the lineup. I thought that would might screw things up a little bit, and it sure did. Yeah, Ronnie, why don't you uh, get your uh, logistics straight over there? I'm trying, Kip. I'm trying. I'll get it straight. I got my score sheet. That kind of told me where I was on that one. So, inning is over. No score after one. Davalos is back out, and he will be facing catcher Dallas Autry to lead things off here in the top of the second. No score. 4-5-5. Five, five. This pitcher had flash. He's got double flash. So that means Autry is going to strike out as well as J.R. Keel. So he gets a double eye poke with a double strikeout. That double flash can be deadly to an offensive lineup. Two quick outs before you can even know what's going on. Kind of stuns the bees there. Two quick outs, and here's Ruelas. 3-3-4. Three, three, is he an ace or a star? He is a semi-star. Dot gives it to him, so it's a pop out to first, and that's going to end the inning as a beta puts it away. 1-2-3 inning. These don't go down quickly. The double eye poke kind of staggered him and uh, didn't give him much opportunity to get anything going here in the second inning. So we'll go to the bottom of the second. Still no score, and now Abeda will bat in his normal fifth position as he's supposed to. And we'll get things straight. Here's Abeda. Two, three, four. Nobody's on base. Is he a hot batter? No, Abeda's not a hot batter, so he's going to pop to third. And that's one away. And that will send us to Corey Shorter. All right, that was the tenth out of the ball game. And the tenth out of the ball game was brought to you by Ten Pen Bowling Centers. Remind you, if you have some spare time and you haven't been bowling in a while, you probably should. It could be right down your alley. Now, thank you for that, Kip. Here's Shorter. One, four, five. Not a struggler, so he's going to ground it out to first base. Easy play for Mr. Sargent. Two down. Two up and two down. That brings up Pauly Potus. 5 6 6. He's not wild. Does he have a good eye? No, he does not. It's a strikeout, and that's going to end the inning. It's also in blue, so we're going to the right now chart. 
for the first at bat of the top of the third, but after two complete, it's no score here from Nashville. And the right now chart is going to include Davalos, the pitcher for Nashville. He is neutral because he got Ruelas to pop to first, so that's just a neutral result there. And Lamont Clark has not come to bat yet, so he is also neutral. So it is neutral against neutral on the right now chart. And we get a 1-6 on the right now chart for neutral versus neutral. 1-6, hot pitcher, no. If he was, he would fool the batter with an outside pitch and ground him to short. Otherwise, it's a clean single pass second base. If it's delta rating, then he would get a double. Or if he, whatever was on his delta rating, I should say. If he had the delta rating, he does not, though. But it is going to be a clean single for Lamont Clark. So Lamont Clark taking advantage of the pitcher not being hot. And he strokes a leadoff single, and that brings up Greg Dollywall. 3-4-6. And 3-4-6 for Davalos. It's blank. Is the batter eager? No, he's not. It's going to be a walk. So all of a sudden, the Bees have something going here in the third inning. Bottom part of the order, making it happen. Clark and now Dollywall. Single and a walk. To start the inning. That's in purple, so we're going to the chemistry chart for Dylan Hutto. But the Bees are semi-dissonant. The high notes are neutral. Now they're both neutral on the chemistry chart. 2-5. Two 2-5 five. Two five on the chemistry chart. Pitching team distance, no. It's going to be a fly out to right. Route number one. So Hutto flies to right. One down for Ignacio Orta. Two two four. I believe that's the pitching at home. And again, the bees on this long road trip getting stung by that. Pitching at home. He is pitching at home. So pop out to short for out number two. Infield fly rule. Bees are on the last three games of an eleven game road trip. Four, t four city, 11 game road trip, but they will be looking to go home after this to take on Vancouver, the other top team in the other division. So it could be a battle of first place teams depending on how the Bees do in this series. So that'll bring up Barkdahl. One, two, three, flash and fresh. Yes, it's going to be strikeout. It's a double. He's got the, the double flash, but it's the last out of the inning, so no carryover. Simply a strikeout to end the inning, and the Bees miss an opportunity after getting the first two on. And they leave two on at the end of two and a half. Still no score from Rubicon Wireless Park. And Trini Pimentel back up. Yeah, well, we're having a hard time with this Davalos guy. I don't know what kind of hitter he is, but he sure looks like a good pitcher so far. That he is, Kip. That he is, but it's still early. We got a chance to get him later. It's only been... We only had three innings at him, so... We'll get him. Hopefully. Here's John Pender. 2-2-3. Two, two, Pitcher Wild. No. Is he slugger utility? He is a utility, so he will line out to short, but he's a whiffer also, which means, he, in fact, he will strike out. So the cold hitter, designated cold batter, strikes out to stay cold. And here's Amato Palacios, second baseman. 1-3-6. He's not an ace. It's better whiffer or cold. He's a whiffer, so he's going to strike out. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Pimentel. And he's matching Davalos pitch for pitch. Back to the top of the order and Mattis. 1-3-6, the same role. Not an ace. Is he whiffer or cold? He's a semi-whiffer. The sire die says he is, so... Down he goes, and Pimentel strikes out the side here in the third. So, excellent pitching here from both starting pitchers. And now we go to the fourth. And both pitchers will move to semi-freshness as we start the fourth. And the fourth inning is the New York Lottery home run inning. If any B's player hits a home run here in the fourth inning... One lucky listener will win the jackpot, which now stands at $850. And tonight's contestant is Roger Calhoun of Buffalo. So good luck, Roger. Your first 
batter to help you out is Todd Sargent, who happens to be a semi home run king. It's a two, three, four. Nobody's on base. Is he a hot batter? Sargent is not a hot batter, so he's going to pop it up to third. One away. That's going to bring up Dallas Autry. He is a slugger and a semi home run king, so also a good guy to have up there. 1-1-3. One, one, is he ace or dynamic? Neither one. Is the batter a slugger? Yes, he is. He's going to double to left field. So a double to left for Dallas Autry. It's not a home run, but it will be a double. Double for Dallas Autry. One out double. That brings it to J.R. Keel. He's a semi-slugger, so certainly capable of the long ball. 446 though ask is he a star he is a star it's going to be a ground out to second it's going to move Autry to third but now there are two away and the chances are running out for Mr. Calhoun Miguel Ruelas though is a home run king so he's still got a chance there are two outs now here in the top of the fourth. Archery at third, trying to get in. One six six. He's not a workman. Is the batter a whiffer? Yes, he is. He's going to strike out. So Ruella strikes out to end the inning. So nothing doing for the bees here in the fourth. And unfortunately, Mr. Roger Calhoun, no jackpot for you tonight. However, you will get fifty dollars in consolation scratch-off tickets, courtesy of the New York Lottery. And the jackpot for the next game will be an even. $900. Yeah, well, I would like to see somebody win that money once in a while you know, for a change. Uh, well, I guess the good news is the jackpot keeps building, just like the regular lottery. Just keep building. Somebody's got to win it. Well, hopefully, Kip, hopefully somebody does win it, and if they do win it, then hopefully it's on a home run that wins the game for the bees, or at least puts them on their way to winning. But we shall see. Okay, bottom of the fourth we go. Pimentel also semi-fresh now. And he'll be facing Marashka. So Marashka is your batter. He flew to right his first time up. 3-5-5. Struggler gilded? No. Is he a champion? No, he's not. He's going to ground to second unless he's a whiffer. He is a whiffer, so Marotzka will take a seat and grab some bench. That's four strikeouts in a row. Actually, five strikeouts in a row for Pimentel. He got POTUS to end the second, struck out the side in the third, and gets the first strikeout here in the fourth. So, five Ks in a row for Pimentel. One, two, five. He's certainly not a struggler. He's a better patient. No, he's not patient. He'll ground to third unless he's a whiffer. He's a semi-whiffer, but the sire die says no, so the strikeout string ends at five. It is simply a ground ball to Ruelas at third for out number two. But I'm sure Pimentel will certainly take it. Keep the high notes off the bases. Here's a, the pitcher, Davalos, is now up. Almost forgot to bring him in again. He is the cleanup hitter, so Davalos is your batter. First time up, he struck out. That's a 2-3-6 double control, but again, he's eager, so that means he's going to strike out again. So that's going to end the inning. So four in the books here at Rubicon Wireless Stadium. No score between the Bs and the high notes. And now Davalos coming back out, and he'll be facing Lamont Clark. Dollywald and Hutto was Clark and Dollywald that got things started back in the third inning, but they were stranded on base. 5-5-6. Five, 5-5-6. Five, six. Five, five, six. Is he an ace? No, he's not. Is he a sad sack? No, he's not. It's a double to right field for Lamont Clark. So how about that? Clark singled in the third. He now doubles to lead off the fifth for the bees and since it is the fifth inning a reminder that the fifth inning is sponsored by the law firm of where 
Where's my slip? Kip, did you hide my slip? Man, Ronnie, you're supposed to know this stuff by heart. Why don't you cheat you? Well, I do tonight, Kip. Time to deal with your singing. Uh, the fifth inning is sponsored by the law offices of Howie Cheatham and Daly. That reminds you, when all else fails, just plead the fifth. What good are you over there, Kip? You're supposed to be my wingman and gives me all my props. Oh, sorry about that, Ronnie. I thought you had it under control. All right, Kip. I'm still befuddled by your singing, but that's another story. Here's Dolly Wall. One, two, four, control. Yes, he does have it with the dot. So that's going to be a ground ball to short, and Clark's going to have to hold. So ground out, and the runner does not advance. Back to the top of the order for Dylan Hutto. He struck out in the first, flew to right in the third. Two, three, four, runners are on base this time, so we do have plate drama. For the first time, we do have plate drama. Shorter is a gold catcher. So that could definitely come into play. Gold catcher. 3-6, though, on plate drama. Catcher iron. No, he's not iron. So it's going to be over for a ball, and we're going to the umpire chart for the first time. With the bases empty. Umpire chart, bases empty. One four on the umpire chart with the bases empty. One four says lenient umpire at home. The home plate umpire is Mr. Sacco. Bart Sacco. He's semi strict. He is not lenient. So the answer to that question is no. If he was lenient as a home plate umpire, it'd be a generous strike zone for strike three. Other umpires call ball one, batter still at bat. So Dylan Hutto gets a break as Sacco did not ring him up. So he gets to stay in there and get another chance. Four, four, five. Davalos, 4-4-5. Four, four, he's not a workman. He's better patient. No, he's not patient. He's going to ground to first. That will move Clark to third. But now there are two outs. So two down, and it's up to the free agent, recently acquired free agent Ignacio Orta. To try to help the Bees break through. Clark's at first, at third base dancing down there trying to get something maybe to distract Davalos. 5-5-6. Five, five, I could have done it. 5-5-6. Five, five, He's not an ace. It's batter a sad sack. He is a semi-sad sack but the dot says no. So that means it's a double to right field for Ignacio Orta and the bees finally break through. Ignacio Orta with a two out double puts the bees on the board one to nothing. Ignacio Orta Drives home Lamont Clark with the first run of the ball game. And that'll bring up Joe Barkdahl. Three, four, five. Iron catcher. No, he's a goal catcher. Is he a good eye? No, he doesn't. He's going to strike out, and that's going to end the inning. It is in blue, so we're going to the right now chart for the bottom of the fifth. But the bees break through with two doubles. Take a one nothing lead. So we go to the bottom of the fifth. And the right now chart, Pimentel struck out Davalos, so he is going to be semi-hot. And a beta pop to third, he will be neutral. So we've got a semi-hot pitcher against a neutral batter. He is a hot pitcher. So Pimentel is a hot pitcher. It's a 1-4. One 1-4 four. One four says cold batter. No, he's not cold. He's neutral. If he was cold, he would strike out. Otherwise, we got outfield drama. So... We go to outfield drama, which is not good for the Bees. No kind of drama is good for the Bees because their defense is so porous. 3-3 in the outfield drama. Left fielder gold. No, left fielder Dolly Wall is not gold. So it's going to be a single, and it's going to fumble the ball, and the, and the runner's going to go to second on an error. So it's going to be a single plus an error for a beta as he's able to take second base. So a single plus an E7 puts the tying run at second base with nobody out. And Pimentel not too happy about Mr. Dollywall's activity out there. That particular result also was in red. So we're going to the experience chart 
for the next at bat and Pimentel is an icon. Corey Shorter is a semi icon. On the experience. All right, Shorter is neutral now. 2-4 on the experience chart. Icon batter. No, he's not. If he was, he would single, but otherwise he's going to ground to short, and that's going to keep the runner at second base with no advancement. So a big break there. We're out number one. And that's going to bring up Pauly Potus with a beta still at second base and now one out. Three, four, five. I believe that's the iron catcher result, and Autry is not iron. Does he have a good eye? No, he does not. He's going to strike out, and that's in blue. So we're going to the right now chart for the next at bat. Pender struck out his last time up. He is semi cold, and Pimentel with that strikeout he just was able to do makes him semi hot. Advantage bees. One five. We do have a hot pitcher and a cold batter on a 1-5. One 1-5 five. One five says cold batter. Yes, he is. Watches his third strike, catches the outside corner, and that's going to end the inning. So they leave a beta at second and Pimentel with yet another strikeout. This one catching Pender looking to end the inning. So five innings are in the books here at Rubicon Wireless. Still one nothing bees. We will go to the top of the sixth. Last inning of semi-freshness for Mr. Davalos since he has given up a run. And Todd Sargent will be your leadoff hitter. Sargent grounded to short in the first, popped to fifth, popped to third rather in the fourth. Triple threes. That could be good for Mr. Sargent. Triple threes. Ask, is he utility or sad sack? He's neither one. Is he a, It's a triple into the gap unless he's a home run king. He would get a home run. He's a semi-home run king. The doc gives it to him. So, kaboom, that is gone. Todd Sargent just cracks one. Got into the gap in left field and actually cleared the wall. Left fielder Norris thought he had a play, but he did not. And Todd Sargent kicks him in the privates on that one with a solo shot. And the Bees lead it 2 to nothing as they're getting to Mr. Davalos. Here's Dallas Autry. 236, double control. He does not have it. He's not eager. So it will be a walk to Dallas Autry. So maybe they're getting to Mr. Davalos. Third time through the order. Here's J.R. Keel. 344. Four. Prospect pitcher. No, he's not. He's a better patient. No, he's not. It's going to be a pop out to second. And that is out number one. Big out there to get Keel without any runner advancement. Here's Ruelas. 3-3-4. Three, three, Again. Let's see, is he an ace for star? He is not. He's a semi-star. Dot does not give it to him. Sad sack batter. We've got to check and see if he's a sad sack or not. He's a semi-sad sack. He's not a sad sack. So he's not going to be a sad sack, which means he's going to single to left field. If he's eager, he would ground out, but he's not eager. So the single's going to stand. Lead die of three. Runner advances two bases on any hit. So Autry will take third. And Ruelas with the base hit. And this may be the beginning of the end for Davalos. Lamont Clark is your batter, and he's already singled and doubled off of Davalos. So they're going to make a move to the bullpen. Will the high notes. They are going to make a call to the bullpen. And this pitching change is brought to you by Grease Monkey. Visit, visit any of the three area uh, Buffalo area Grease Monkeys to get an oil change. Don't monkey around with your car or truck. Take it to Grease Monkey. Their low prices will have you going bananas. Who do we got down there in the bullpen that's coming in? Uh, Kip, you've been kind of quiet over there. Uh, yeah, I've right, been kind of trying to memorize these songs. Uh, let me check real quick. Uh, looks like it's going to be right-hander uh, Eric Mayo. Okay, it's Eric Mayo. 
Eric Mayo, the bat, the new pitcher. And that'll be it for Davalos. He will also have to lead the lineup, so pitcher spot is there with no DH that will have to pinch hit once they get to that point. That's one of the disadvantages of using a pitcher like that. But Mayo is in. He will become an ace. This is this particular bat against Lamont Clark. And we'll see how they do this. Yeah, Ronnie, I heard uh, Mayo has a pretty good fastball, so hopefully the bees can catch up to Mayo. Uh, maybe you go back better back. Uh, your jokes aren't very good, uh, Kip. Maybe you'd be better off singing. Second thought, don't do that either. All right, so runners on the corners, one out, one in. Here in the top of the six, and Lamont Clark, infield playing for the double play. 2-5-5. Five, five. Is he a star? Yes, he is. It's going to be a strikeout, a huge strikeout. As a strikeout, Lamont Clark for out number two. And it's all up to Dolly Wall to see if the Bees extend the lead. Mayo trying to pitch out of the mess. Three, four, five. He's not, not an iron catcher. He's a good eye. No, he doesn't. Struck him out. That's going to end the inning. That's in blue, so we're going to the right now chart in the bottom of the six. But right now, the bees buzzing after the top of the six due, due to the Todd Sargent home run. And at the end of five and a half, it is Buffalo two and Nashville nothing. Pimentel, since he's pitching a shutout, can possibly carry semi-freshness further than the sixth inning. We shall see, but it is the right now chart that we're going to. Pimentel on his last batter, he struck out Pender, so he is fully hot. Now in the sixth inning, we don't need the dot anymore. He's fully hot. Palacios struck out his only opportunity, so he is fully cold. So fully hot pitcher against a fully cold batter. 2-4 on the right now chart. 2-4. Hot batter. No, he's not. He's going to fly to left. So easy out there for Mr. Pimentel as he gets the number 9 hitter Palacios out of the way. Go back to the top of the order for Mattis. Mattis grounded to second and struck out 0 for 2. One two six. Is he fresh? Pimentel. Yes, semi-fresh. Dot gives it to him. So he is fresh, and on the one, two, six, it will be a liner right to the second baseman, Hutto, for out number two. So Pimentel pitching well again. He and Sho have been leading the way. In fact, most of their pitchers have been doing very well. Most of their starting pitchers. It's been the offense that's been a little struggling, but the, the pitching, despite the bad defense, is doing very well. Here's Morasca. Two, four, four. Two, four, four. Is he an ace? No, he's not. It's better champion. No, he's not. It's going to be a ground out to short unless he's a whiffer. He is a whiffer. He will strike out. So yet another strikeout for Pimentel to end the inning. Six innings in the books. B still lead it two to nothing. As we go to the top of the seventh, Mayo now coming back out will be semi-fresh. And Dylan Hutto to lead things off. Hutto try to move him in the leadoff spot to see if he could do something. And he's 0 for 3. Struck out, flew to right, and grounded to first. That leadoff spot is still a mystery for the Bees. They can't figure it out. 2, 3, 4. Nobody's on base. So there's no uh, plate drama. He's not, definitely not a hot batter, so he's going to pop it to third. And that'll do it there. One away for Ignacio Orta. He had the big RBI double back in the fifth for the first run of the game. One, two, two. He's not a workman. He's a better champion or whiffer. Neither one. So he will line it to third, and that's out number two. Pop out to third, line out to third. They're keeping Mr. Mattis busy over there. Two down for Joe Barkdahl. He's struggled. Did double in the first, but he struck out both times since. 2-5-6. Pitcher's not a struggler. Is he a champion or patient hitter? Semi-champion. Doc gives it to him. 
He's also semi-patient, the doc gives it to him. So he will draw a two-out walk. So Bark Doll coaxing a two-out walk to keep the inning alive for Sergeant who homered his last time up. One one five. Is he fresh? No, he's not fresh. Is it better a home run king or a sad sack? We gotta see if he's a home run king or not. He is not a home run king, so he won't strike out. So he's gonna double to left field. How about that? A double to left for Sargent. And we'll see about base running situations. Runners advance one base on hit, two bases on doubles. Active runner scores from second on any hit with two outs. Any runner scores from second on any hit. But it has to be active. Barkdahl is Barkdahl active. Barkdahl is actually semi-stoic. So even with two outs, he cannot score, unfortunately. So Sargent with the double. But it's still going to put two on with two out. And a lefty Dallas Autry coming up. And the high notes are going to the bullpen for a left-hander. They will go to the bullpen for left-handed action. And they will be calling on Mr. Ray Kellogg. Ray Kellogg, the lefty, is coming on to face Dallas Autry in a big spot to try to keep this game in check and from getting completely out of hand. One base hit might put the game away for the Bees. So Kellogg is in there. He is now an ace. Since he's coming in middle of an inning, he's also got the lefty on lefty advantage. See what he does with Mr. Autry. 3 4 5. Not an iron catcher. Doesn't have the good eye, so it's a strikeout, and that's going to end the inning. It's also in blue. So we're going to the right now chart in the bottom of the seventh, and since we're on the road, there is going to be no seventh inning stretch to play. We do that on home games only. But we do go to the bottom of the seventh. If you want to kip, if you want to take an unofficial stretch, you go right ahead. But there'll be no musical accompaniment. That's going to be uh, Kellogg will definitely come back in because he's only faced one batter. And he did his job. So we're going to the right now chart for Pimentel. And Pimentel struck out Moraska's last time up, so he is hot. And Norse is the batter and Norse is neutral. So we have a hot pitcher and a neutral batter and actually Kellogg will not come back out because he's set to bat next inning or next at bat. So they'll be going to their bullpen or not their bullpen to their pinch hitting to their bench for a pinch hitter. I'll get it straight in a minute. Here's Justin Norse. Actually no I said it was on the right now chart didn't I? Yeah, Ronnie, uh, get straight over here. You're kind of losing your grip here. It's been a long day, Kip, so we're trying to finish things out in style. Hopefully the bees will help us do that. It's still 2 to nothing. So we have a hot pitcher against a neutral batter. 4-6 on the right now chart. 4-6, hot pitcher. Baffles batter with call third strike. So Norse is out on strikes and yet another strikeout for Mr. Pimentel. He has just owned the high notes in this ball game. So now they're going to go to the bench and see who they're going to bring in. They're going to bring in Antonio Hodo. Antonio Hodo is left-handed, so he's going to come into bat, pinch hit. against Mr. Pimentel. 1-3-3. One, 1-3-3. Three, three. One, three, three. Is the batter a slugger? No, he's a home run king, but not a slugger. So he's going to fly to left. And there's one, or actually now two away. So Pimentel dodged one there. Pinch hitter fails. We'll get a new pitcher for Nashville in the eighth. Here's a beta. 2-3-5. Is he wild? No. Is he eager? No, he's not. It's a ground out to second unless he's patient, but he's not patient, so the ground out to second is going to stand up, and that's going to end the inning. Another 1-2-3 inning for Pimentel. 
He has tossed seven shutout frames, continues to keep his semi-freshness. And we go to the top of the eighth. And new pitcher coming in for the high notes. Let's see who they're going to go to. The Bs have Keel, Ruelas, and Clark coming up. Three righties, so it would make sense they would go to a right-hander out of the bullpen. And they're going to go to... They're going to go to Russell Bear. Russell Bear is coming on. Right-hander. And he'll be facing Keel, Ruelas, and Clark to start the top of the eighth. Uh, well, I think as we start the eighth inning, a reminder that the eighth inning is sponsored by Eight Ball Billiards. Feature a full service bar, snack bar, and 20 tables. We have more balls for you to play with than anyone in town. Thank you, Kip. We're ready to start the top of the eighth now. 2 nothing Buffalo. 1 2 3, and that is Flash and Fresh. He is Flash with the dot, and he is fresh, obviously, so it is a strikeout. J.R. Keel going down on strikes. One away for Miguel Ruelas. 2 2 4, that's that pitching at home again. Second time it's cost the Bees to pop up to short. Second time that has happened. It happened back in the third to Orta, and now it's happening to Ruelas. And the Bees are looking to see if they can get that advantage when they go back home as well to the friendly confines. Right now, here's Lamont Clark. 3-6-6. He's not a pinch hitter, so he's going to fly to center. And that's going to end the inning. So an easy 1-2-3 inning for Russell Bear. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Still two to nothing. Bullpen action is now stirring for the bees. Just in case. Pimentel should start to falter. They do have a left-hander. Derek No. Dr. No is loosening in the bullpen. Of course, Gatro is their closer if they need immediate assistance. But they, with a two-nothing lead in the bottom of the eighth, they're going to try to turn over to the setup man. Should the starter get in trouble. But really, Pimentel has only given up two hits. So he's been large and in charge, so why not leave him in there? Here's Corey Shorter. Shorter is grounded to first and grounded to short. 1-5-6. Is he a whiffer? He's not a whiffer, so we have outfield drama for the Bees, which could be trouble. 3-5 on the outfield drama. Left fielder gold. No, he's not. It's going to be a double. So Shorter hits a leadoff double off of Pimentel because the left fielder Dolly Wall was not gold. So it is a leadoff double for Shorter. And now the tying run is coming to the plate in Pauly Potus. That result would normally go to the chemistry chart because of that. But the bees are going to make a move to the pen, and that overrides the chemistry rolls or chemistry chart. And Doctor No is going to come on with a lefty Paulus coming up, uh, Potus coming up. They're going to match up lefty on lefty with Derek No. So Pimentel is going to go seven plus, give up three hits and no runs, but the runner on first is his responsibility. He can win it. He cannot lose it. All right, Pauly Potus, lefty on lefty against Mr. No, who is now an ace with semi-star. Three, four, five. No iron catcher. No good eye. It's a strikeout. So a huge strikeout there for No. That's also in blue. We're going to right now chart. Pender is cold from striking out his last time up. And No is hot from what he just turned in right there. He will be the hot batter. So let's see, do they, do they want to go to a... No, they really don't have much on the bench to go to, so they're going to stick with Pender. Cold pitcher, a cold hitter against hot pitcher. 3-4 on the right now chart. 3-4. Cold batter. Uh, yes, he is, which means the weak dribbler to the pitcher. 
the batter slump affects team side retired alternating ground outs and pop outs. So how about that? Derek No is going to get the next two out, next out after that as well. So the first out that gets recorded is a ground out back to the pitcher, and then the next are ground outs. And let's see where that last ground out went to the third baseman, Ruelas. So it's going to be a ground out to the pitcher for out number two, and then ground to third by Palacios to end the inning. So Derek No does his job. Keeps the high notes off the scoreboard. We go to the ninth. It is two to nothing. Still in favor of the Bees. And Mark Gatro, the closer for the Bees, is loosening in the bullpen. As it looks like it would be his time to come in the bottom of the ninth. But right now, the Bees going to try to add to that lead. They'd like to take it out of a save situation if possible. But Russell Bear was tough his first inning through, so they got the work cut out for him. Here's Dolly Wall. 1-1-3 one, one, for Dolly Wall. 1-1-3, one, one, ace for dynamic pitcher, no. Is he a slugger? No. So he's going to single to center field unless he's a sad sack. He is not, so Dolly Wall will single. So leadoff single for Dolly Wall. That's his first hit of the game. He reached on a walk also, but that's his first base hit. And here's Dylan Hutto. 1-1-5, one, one, he is not fresh. Is he a home run king or sad sack? He is a home run king, which means he's going to strike out. So a big strike out there to get Dylan Hutto for out number one. That's going to bring up Ignacio Orta. 2-2-5. Two, two, is he a star? No, he's not a star. It's a batter slugger or sad sack. He is a slugger which means he's going to pop it up to right field. So that's two down. Pender comes in and makes the catch. Two outs, and now here's Barkdahl. Three, three, six. Three, three, six. Acer dynamic. He is neither one of those. Sad sack utility or patient. He is semi-patient, which means he's going to take a call strike three, and Barkdahl is out of there to end the inning. So the Bees thought they could add to their lead, but came up a little empty-handed. Kind of disappointing. Barked all your main guy. You thought he would do something with runners on base, but did not. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. Last chance for the high notes, and they'll have to do it against the closer, Mark Gatro of the Bees. He's ace flash with double control. And the lineup he's going to be facing... It's top of the order. It's Mattis, Maraska, and Norse. If anybody gets on a pinch hitter for the pitcher Bear. And as a reminder, the ninth inning, sponsored by Strange Brew Magic Stores in Kenmore and Buffalo. Stop by either location. Whether you need ninth inning magic or any kind of magic, Strange Brew will do the trick. Yeah, Ronnie, hopefully a Strange Brew is going to keep... Nashville from any ninth inning magic around here. Put up a block drag into that uh, magic stuff. All right, Kip. Hopefully they'll send down some good vibes for magic for the bees. We shall see. Right now, Gatro coming on to try to wrap it up for the bees. Facing Pat Mattis. 2 nothing. bottom of the ninth. 1-2-6. He is fresh. His first battery is facing. It's a line out to second. So one away. B's two outs away from a victory in the first game of the series. Here's Maraska lefty on lefty. 1-1-6. One, one, he is fresh again. And that's going to be a strikeout. Rings him up. Rings up Maraska for out number two. The high notes down to their final out. And it's going to be Norse. 3-5-6, that's a left-right split. He is a switch hitter, so he will get the base hit because of that. That's the second time he has gotten the base hit on the left-right split. Once against the righty and now against a lefty. So he's done it twice with that left-right split. And now the tying run has come to the plate. And we need a pinch hitter because we are at the pitcher spot. And not much on the bench 
I'll say for the uh, high notes, they're going to go to Garland Ard because he's right-handed. So Garland Ard will be coming on to pinch hit to try to keep the game going. Garland Ard against Gatro. He is the tying run at the plate. One, three, four. Goal catcher, no. Is he a champion? No. We got outfield drama, so this is not over by a long shot. You know how the drama has not been well for the bees. Outfield drama, 3-5. Three, 3-5 five. Three, five on the outfield drama. Left field goal. No, he's not. It's going to be another double. And let's see if that scores the run. Double. Let's check the uh, runner on let's do the lead die of 3. Runner advances two bases on any hit, single, or double. Okay, so it says two bases, so Norris is going to be at third base. But Garland Ard comes through with a pinch hit double. And that's also going to send us to the chemistry chart for the next at bat of a beta. And this one is not over yet. Unfortunately, some ninth inning magic is trickling over to the Nashville high notes. Yeah, right. I'm getting a little nervous over here. Uh, we need a strange brew maybe to uh, put a little extra spell on these uh, high notes over here. We'll see if that can happen here, Kip. But we are going to the chemistry chart, which, again, is not necessarily good for the bees. They are semi-dissonant. Now they are dissonant. 6-6. Six, six. 6-6 six, six on the chemistry chart. Batting team harmony. No, they're neutral. It would be a fence check. Otherwise, they struck him out. So how about that? The fact that they were not harmonious. He gets the strikeout, and the ball game is over. Boy, the, talk about holding it into the last minute. If they had been harmonious, that would have been a fence check and most likely have been a home run. Although it was semi-scrapper, it certainly would have tied the game. But Gatro. Despite some troubles, pitches out of it. And the Bees hold on to win it by the score of 2 to nothing. And we'll be right back with the totals. Uh, welcome back to Rubicon Wireless Park, where the Bees have defeated the Nashville High Notes in the first game of this three-game series. And to wrap things up and total this thing up and put a bow on it, turn it over to our broadcast partner, the voice of the Bees, Ronnie Robinson. Thank you, Kip. Look at our totals for tonight's game. Buffalo, total lineup, two runs, nine hits, one error. They did leave 10 on base. That's a little bit alarming to leave that many people on base, but it didn't cost them in this game in particular, but that could cost them in the future. Uh, Nashville, no runs, five hits, no errors, and five left. Winning pitcher was Trini Pimentel, and the losing pitcher was the two-way player Davalos, and the save went to Gautreau. Well, the Bees just... We'll play two more games here in Nashville. They will not be broadcast, but there will be two more games. And then the Bees will finally get home to National Airways Stadium, the friendly confines in Buffalo, for a four-team, eight-game homestand as they play all four teams from the Western Division, two games apiece. It'll be Vancouver first up, then they'll play Chicago, Milwaukee, and San Antonio before they go on the road to Chicago after that. So eight-game homestand coming up for the Bees, and it'll be the first-place Vancouver team in the Western Division. So we'll see how the two top teams match up, assuming the Bees hold in the first place by the time that matchup gets here. That's what we'll be looking at. Player of the game, have to give it to Mr. Pimentel. You just shut down Nashville... Uh, and turned the lights out and said the music dies right here. So maybe this wasn't the day the music dies, but certainly the night the music dies as Nashville came away empty-handed against the Bees. So for my country star partner, wannabe, Kip Scary, this is Ronnie Robinson signing off again. Final score, Buffalo 2, Nashville nothing. We will see you next time from Buffalo as the bees welcome Vancouver. Good night, everybody.